Okay, perfect. All right. So as you all know, I'm Melissa Mose. I own Melissa Simply Sweet, and this is your writing class. So we're going to go over royal icing writing, and we will do buttercream. I do a Swiss meringue buttercream, so we'll go over techniques of writing and buttercream. But between the two, I find the royal icing is the one that really is the hiccup to get everyone because that's the one where you need to get the consistency just right so that things level off, it's not bumpy, you, your lines don't break, all these sorts of things. Okay, so here's, you have all these things to do. So I took a class once and this was like the neatest thing. I have to figure out which camera to point it to. But anyways, the neatest thing that I was kind of, she went through and, and she, the best thing to do when you're practicing writing is you have to practice your writing. I mean, that, that's it. And so you can pay, take a page, put in a page protector and practice. Your number one thing you wanna start before you can write, you have to make sure you can do your lines. So if your line work is on point where you know you can start and you can finish, you're not pulling up, you're not stopping short. Once you can master your lines, then you're on your way to writing. It's no different than when we were all in preschool and we learned to write, we started with lines. Okay, totally the same thing. So I'm gonna go over what we're gonna do and then we're gonna do it. So we're gonna go over the lines. I will show to you everything you see that I've printed off. I'm gonna put it all in a file online so you can print it yourself, put it in a page protector, practice it, it will, it really will help. I mean, I honestly just had this class in March and did this in March and I have seen already a huge improvement just in my writing. So I firmly believe writing can only get better. And even when I know how to do it, I still learn the tricks of the trade. All right. So we are going to do a couple of things. One, we're going, one way to do really great writing is we're going to do stenciling. We're, okay. Okay. All right. Stenciling where we're going to airbrush on and then you can write over and then look at Christy. She's like, ah, it's fine. And then the other thing to do is I'm going to go over two different projectors. So I have always used a copy cake and I've had it since for like 10 years. And then I just purchased my first Pico. So we're going to do cookies on the copy cake. And then we're also going to do it with the Pico because I'm gonna be really honest with you, when you see a lot of this very perfect writing, a lot of times it's with a projector. It is not a shortcut. It is not cheating or anything. It's called life. I mean, you've gotta like make it work. So we're gonna do both of them so that you can see. I don't know if you guys have projectors, but this will be a good show for you to see which one works best for you. One is very bulky and one is very not. And then we're also going to do, um, talk about fonts and where you can pull your fonts. So I use, um, it's a free service called DaFont, D-A-F-O-N-T. And basically you can pull up any font you like. You can change and write it into whatever you want. Like you wanna write Melissa Mose it will change it into whatever you want, and then you will print it. If you use a copy cake, put it in your projector, and if you are using a Pico, you'll just transfer it from your phone, which of course sounds so much easier. It kind of is. Okay, so if, and seriously, if you have any questions, just like completely stop me, because don't ever hesitate. All right, so Chrissy, don't do anything. So I am going to get icing and I made icing. All right, look, we'll go, let's go this way. All right, so I made icing and um, you will see I made it super, 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 super thick. Like I am not exaggerating thick. Like it's not going anywhere. I think I could, I could plaster a house with it. This is really how I like my icing to start when I'm going to decide where I'm going to take it. So I will have it in the bowl and then I will, I mean, you can see it's like, it's not going anywhere. And to me, it's always, if I know that I'm going to do a massive amount of cookies that I'm going to flood, then I will 
take it to a to a, a, a looser stage. But if I'm like this, where I know I want to write, I'm not 100% sure how much I'm going to be flooding, I will take it to this point. And then I will add my water and go from there. Because I feel like this way, if I take it too loose, yes, you can always take it back and you can add, um, you can add, uh, whatchamacallit, more, more powdered sugar, or you can add more water. See, I added water. It was a lot of water. I sometimes do that, and then I just pour my water out. And so what you're looking for with the consistency, because this is really what it's all about. It's all about consistency. If you don't get the consistency, you'll never get the writing to write the way you want it. Now, as you've seen in some of my other classes, I always will go and I will, I go back over here. I will go and I will um, color my icing first and then I will thin it out. And I always do that except like right now, okay, Elizabeth fixed her Swiss mine. Okay, see, it passed, it's like magic. All right, so I will usually 99% of the time always do my color first and then thin it. But when it's like plaster, girl, like that'd be killing the arm. So I had to thin it out just a pinch before I could do my, um, my icing. So I will start with just a drop. And I always say you usually want to thin your icing after you color it because you're adding technically liquid to it. And so there is a, a hint of thinning it out as you go. I chose to do a really bright color because I'm going to feel like it will be easier for you guys to see what um, it is versus something really, really light. So if you wanted to know, this is Americolor Sky Blue. It just like was, it was literally on my counter with my Easter colors. Okay. So I already know this is still really, really thick, but we'll see what it looks like. And see, it, it's nice, it's holding its shape. It's not going anywhere. So I know it holds the lines really nicely, but if I like feverishly shake it, you see how it's gonna blend? So that'll tell me that as my icing is sitting, it will friendly come together to make that really pretty L that you saw I made. It will, it will do that. So we're gonna bag it. Also, when I'm writing, I do try to have less in my bag, just so my hand has like super, super control over what I'm doing. Um, I personally use these bag ties, which I'm going to be real honest with you. I ran out of tape when I was doing my Easter bag, and that was a complete nightmare. So we're going to fill, I'll fill both of these, so then we'll just have it. Um, Melissa. These are, huh? I'm so sorry. I just joined again because my battery was low and I didn't know. So my phone. Oh, no worries. I'm glad. Okay. So, um, also, I use TMP bags. I know that people have been having issues with bags lately um, arriving. These literally, I ordered them on Friday and I got them on Monday. So, there are, I will say that there are quite a few businesses that are still shipping out really, really quickly. All right. Well, Let me have paper towels. I always have wet paper towels. Um, always, always, because I will wipe off my tip with a wet paper towel, and then I will kind of keep my towel, my paper towel, you know, whatever. What, what whatever. I mean, I'll keep my bag covered. Okay, so let's slide this over. I'm going to bring you right over here and we're going to go through this first, but I'm going to make sure that you can see. Oh, look at that. Okay. So now let's talk about these lines because this is really, this was really like, I was like, oh, this is not, um, 
This is like the smartest thing I saw. All right, I'll just show this just because I kind of showed every time I touch a bag. Um, these are tipless and you will always want to find the top seam, push it down. So I do still write tipless. I know that there's a handful of people who go still go tip. I do tipless for everything. It definitely was a learning curve to learn how to do it. Um, but I found like it was a very worthwhile learning curve, especially based on, you know, not wanting to do dishes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So for the lines, the thing is, is that when you're doing, and we'll do buttercream next, we're going to do royal first. So when you do royal or buttercream, whichever it is, you always want to make sure that your tip makes a connection to the product. So here it's the paper. And then you want to kind of gently squeezing your hand. You want to pull your line at the same time and then you'll gently place it down. So like, you know, when you see, when you do like a circle and you're like, how does someone go all the way around? The truth of the matter is, is you're not hugging the edge of your circle. Your, your bag is, your icing will always be elevated in there a certain amount and then it'll place down not to the point that it's crazy but just to the point it's elevated so let me lower you more just so i feel like i want you like like I, okay now you're in close okay so i also touch my i realize now i touch my bag i don't touch my hand but i always anchor myself um i've seen crazy things like people anchor on their chin ugly crazy stuff but I find if you anchor your hand, you have more control than if your hand was just out here on its own. It has no control. I don't, I don't know where whoever invented it, it just became like a complete habit. So I will touch down on the line and then I'm squeezing. But as you can see, I hope you can see, my bag is lifted and my line, my icing is in the air. And this is a miracle because I can't usually pipe and talk at the same time, but bam. Okay. So the line is completely, you know, it's uniform. It's exactly on it. There's no hiccups. There's no bumps. There's no anything. There is one little dip down here, but I think that was when I said it's amazing. All right. The other thing is, and the most important thing, well, I'm a lefty, so I do turn the paper is that when you go to do your line, you want to make sure that, especially, and this comes in handy when you're writing, is that when you do your connection line, you don't want to go over your current line and pull. You don't want to push into your current line so that you move it. You want to just ever so carefully start your icing and stop. And then you stopped perfectly. And that's, the, that's where this comes in such great handy. It's no different than if you went and got a little kid's um, workbook from kindergarten and you printed off the pages. It's the same thing. I did buy like a calligraphy book and I did the same thing. And you just, when I did this activity for this class, I just became so conscious of what I was doing when I was making lines that I was like, okay, I can see it now. Like I get it. So all right, so that's like a whole activity to do that. But then I'm, I'm going to show you this because I think this way you can see it. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put this one in. And so this will just, I'll just show you kind of a difference of writing. But, and, and then as you see, another thing is, is I know people get really nervous that they might mess up when it comes to their when it comes to their cookie or their cake or whatever, I practice. Writing is also a lot of muscle memory. So if like you saw those cookies I posted, you're freaking awesome. I didn't use a projector for that. So what I did was, was that I wrote it a couple times and I find myself that if I do something a couple times and I do it a couple times, I get a good feel for it. And then I just go like this screw it. I'm going to go for it. And then I go for it. Um, you can absolutely use a projector and those cookies, the way I did it was I did freaking first. And then I came back and I wrote your and awesome above and below it because the freaking made the placement of it. So, okay. So this, this one is, this is like the biggest question everyone always has, like when you're doing calligraphy, 
So this is like the newfangled calligraphy. The key is, and this is how your mind should always work. Any line coming down is thick. Any line going up is thin. And so if you mentally say that to yourself, line going down thick, line going up thin, you can do it two ways. One, you can add extra pressure coming down and thin pressure going up, or you could do it the other way where you want it real dramatic and you do the outline. So I'm going to show you just so you can see, because I feel like maybe this will be helpful, but um, here's the outline version. And then you would just lay down. Okay. So you would come down and then you'd go up, but then you'd stop. Okay. You'd stop right there when you go back up to the O because it's not like when you're writing with ink where you're like, Oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go down. Like with ink, you would go, um, you would go like this. You would go, I'm going to go down and then on ink, you would go right. You would go back and forth. Okay. And then icing, you would go like this. You would go up here and you'd go down and you'd stop. Well, you'd stop pretty good than that. And then you would go down here and then you would stop because you don't want to cross over yourself because when you do, as you see here, it gets thicker and thicker and then it starts to, um, it starts to bleed through. So like, I know like when I do my A's, my A's, you know, your A's, you go, you go up for an A and then you come back down, right? So here they'll tell you, you would bring your A up here, you stop, you would do a thicker line. So this is what it is when you add the thicker pressure, thicker line here, thin going up, thick going down, and it would go like that. So the thing is that you want to do is you always want to say anything coming down will be thick, anything going up will be thin, okay? And then, so that's, all right, and then you can go like that. Highly recommend get yourself a whole lot of parchment because we'll do a whole lot of parchment. So let's go and what we'll, let's, what we'll do now is I want to airbrush these cookies so then you can see how to airbrush the stencil and then that way they can um, dry. And then while they're drying, we'll go over to the projectors and we'll work on the projectors. So do not make a comment at my cookies because all I had was Easter and my family does not want to eat any more cookies. So I just randomly flooded a ton of cookies. Okay, so you have these stencils. I should know where my stencil G is. I do not. So be a good girls and boys from now on and have your little stencil genie with you so that it holds it down. So I just grabbed a couple different ones that I figured would be like perfect to show you writing. Okay, so this one works on my bunny ears. Do you like that? <laughs> okay, so I have um, this, the airbrush I use is the Air Genie Pro and She's right here. Say, Air Genie Pro, and it has um, three little stands, which I'll be honest, I just ordered more, more little guns. So, you know, the more guns you have, the less you can do dishes. Yeah, okay. So I'll be honest, when I'm airbrushing, I do always te test my airbrush before I go to my actual item to make sure, and it works. So now we'll slide over here, slide you away. And you can just airbrush on here. And now instead of having a guide, instead of having a printout, you can have a guide, but we wanna make sure everybody gets on. So it, it would work better if you actually had a cookie that was meant to have to have this. So when you're airbrushing, you definitely wanna make slow passes and you wanna come back. You don't want to sit in one area long, but now we have, now we have a guide. So we have a guide and we can come back and we can pipe right over it. And no one will know that we came in first and we airbrush this. 
This is the easiest way if you want to invest in stencils so that you can use them to airbrush, you can use them for Royal, or you can do this if you don't want to invest in like a Pico or something like that. All right, so that's one little guy. And then here's, we'll do this little guy. Let's see. This little guy is so small. I don't even know what shape this is supposed to be. Okay, here's another one. I tried to get different fonts to talk about, like some that are just printing, some that are just ta-da, um, cursive, and just so we can, I think my other one I can smush two on. And then that one, then we'll do the other. Okay, so here is, thank you. Ugh, I do love the swirlies. Does anyone have any questions at all? No? Nothing. And you see I'm really bad. I, I usually use a stencil like holder, but not always. Okay. And lift. Okay. See? Okay. So we'll do these three in like the stencil way. And then we'll do the other ones with the projector. Yeah. Okay. All right, look at look at us. Okay, so since we're here, we'll do this, and then we'll come back. I think I can fit the. I think I can fit this. Oh, I can totally fit it. All right, we'll fit it because I really want you to see this one because I like the fact that it has um, it's printed, but then I also like the fact that it is that fun new cursive. This Father's Day one, so I would say that's one heck of a cookie. Bake with love. Happy Father's Day. But it's really just so you can totally get the gist of it. Okay. I don't want you to have to look at the blue. All right, let me grab more parchment. And, well, I don't need more parchment. We'll just do it like this. Okay. So let's do this one and then, that's totally fine. Okay, we'll do this one and then we'll go over to the projectors because the projectors are super fun. Um, I love them. Does anyone have projectors? Does anyone use a projector? No, yes, no. I have one. Do you? Which one do you have? I have the Pico. Oh, I'm talking to you. I know you have one. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I honestly just got it and I was like, I couldn't believe how much clearer it was than the coffee cake when I was like, Okay, so I have a really thin line, a thin hole, and I'm going to keep it because you see how I just feel like you have a lot more control when it's a little bit thinner. When we get to like the puffier fonts, I may go a little bit bigger on my hole, but we'll do that. All right, so, and I'm a lefty, so here you go, but I think you're in a good viewpoint unless you guys want to be over my shoulder. Is it, is it better to see it upside down or do you want to see it over my shoulder? It's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? Okay. No. Okay, but I'm go. glad that you're left-handed because I'm left-handed too and I had so much trouble with it. It is. It's hard. And we have to reverse everything. And when I'm in a class, I have so many people, like teachers will <laughs> be like, um, what are you doing? And I'm like, left-handed. Exactly. And then they go, oh, never mind. Like, yes. like I have I leprosy. <laughs> I, like, know. I don't know. But I will tell you, when I was just at Cookie Con, I was impressed on how many instructors made sure one of their assistants was a lefty. Because it is, it really is. It's, it's something that, like, man, we have struggled. We have the struggles. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Move this. It is. Yeah. Okay, so I will go and I, even though I am lefty, some people do write from backwards. I don't because I still have to say the letters in my head. I don't know why, but, um, but as you see, here's the line work that we did earlier. Think about it when you start doing your icing and when you start writing, oh my gosh, this is the lines that you practiced and you're like, oh my goodness. But see, I would stop. I wouldn't go through and do 
the whoopy B and B like I would with my ink, I will stop because if I go in with that middle line and come back out in the same handhold, it would get uber like very thick in the middle. There are some people that would stop right there and not go any further because they want it to thicken up and they want to and and I'll come back because if I go and I merge it up, there's a chance. I'll, you know, wet icing finds wet icing, it all likes to bleed together. So the same goes like when you go, when you come over here to this A, I won't do the hook in the middle because it will again, just you have the chance because it is loose that the icing finds itself and you don't have the sharp angle corners like it was printed off and everybody will merge together and start to flow. Wet icing does nothing more than loves fellow wet icing. All right. And it doesn't mean you wait long. It just means you come back and you do it um, right when I finish. So I got this far, I will go back and I'm gonna be super honest with you because I never lie. I do not do this if I have an order of 300 cookies. I, I'm just, I'm not. I'm gonna actually just write it. <laughs> because I would be here for 300 additional hours and I am the only one when I'm making them that's gonna be able to tell, oh wait, did that be slightly merged together? But just as I wanted to learn exactly the right way, like if there's certain things you're struggling with, if you learn it the right way, then you can push the envelope mm -hmm. to what works best for you and your orders cookie, cake, however it may be. Okay, so I'll go back and I will, I'll do my E and I'll do my A and I'll do my K. See, look how pretty. All right, I'll be honest with you, I still get very excited. Okay. Um, But this is nice thick icing and not moving at all. Okay, so now you have your little nice hand printed doodads. Here comes your fun whoop de woos. All right, so you're gonna go, and this is how I would do it is I am gonna go all the way up here and come down and I'm gonna stop. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna make my little outline. And I'm gonna come this way. So if I had done all of it together, icing would get super thick. Now, here's the beauty of the outline. You can do it one of two ways. This is a very small letter, so I could technically come back immediately and flood it. If you have a wider letter, like that L that you saw in the thing, if you wait for your outer lines to heart to dry, they will become your support system. But if you were to flood it, you will run the risk of it deflating as because the center might be drying faster than the edges because now you've had the, the border icing connects with the middle icing. And so what happens, you become to get an indent or then the almighty crater can come. You'll see a lot of people that will do like the squiggles in the middle and then they'll, then they'll flood it. You, I, I've never used those. I know tons that do and they, they swear by it. But for that to become effective, you have to let the squiggle in the middle fully dry. Not fully dry, but dry, dry. Because if it's wet, it's not helping you at all. Like if you were to do squiggle and then flood, it's like the squiggle was never there. So you'd have to do the squiggle and you'd have to come back after you do your whole word and then flood it. Okay, so I'll leave the line and then just, just so you can see how we come back and do it. Um, and then we'll do the O. But notice, none of these are crossing. Well, you can make certain things cross, but um, if you, it, the less you cross, the less icing you have, 
and then the less lack of control you have. <coughs> bless you. God bless you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, no worries. I'm wondering what Elizabeth's working on over there. Okay. So then I'll come back and I will, I will flood inside of the letters. I don't have stencils, so I'm just freehanding it. Oh, you can totally freehanding it. But can I will get the word of like one of the first people to ever do it with me. Yay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I know, I'm so happy about that. All right. If you couldn't <laughs> tell, it said screw COVID-19. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So let's go do the next one. And so as you can see, I mean, once you break it apart, personally, I feel like things become so much easier. Like when I see a cookie design or a cake design or any kind of design, I kind of sit and I mentally look at it and pull the pieces apart. What do I see? What should I go first? What should go second? You know, like that. And then it's not overwhelming. Like when you see all these decorated cakes or cookies and they have like millions of layers and you're like, ah, that's so much. But if you really just pull it apart and say, okay, it's all this decoration, this, this, and this, and it's all just these little lines writing baked with, it was just a bunch of lines, then you lose the overwhelmingness. The stencil thing, highly recommend it. Here's another thing if you didn't have a set, well, I'll show you the projectors, but another thing is, is that you can also, um, if you were going, well, not writing wise, but you could take, um, if you didn't have an airbrush, I meant you didn't have an airbrush. You could take the stencil and gently, as long as it was dry, very, very dry, you could write it with an edible marker and then come back. So there's, you know, you never, you don't, you can always make your way around to everything and you don't always need, um, like 400 pieces of equipment. It's nice to have it all, but you, you know, it's not always necessary. So, um. So on this letter, and this was like the, okay, I love this one cookie instructor. Her name is, um, okay, she's Hungry Hippopotamus, Stephanie Capel. She's amazing. And she's the one that did the font class. Amazing, amazing. But her biggest thing that she taught us, which I never did before, and this improved my writing, was don't cross over. So like how I had that L come and I, and I started the L on the outside, do you see how this H has this little hook here? Now me, normally, I would have taken that line and gone straight across. But what Stephanie showed us, which totally changed the entire look, was she had us wait to do the center line, stop, and add your line on the outside. And now, it did not, it actually, you kept it intact every line of that H. And that little tip right there was worth the entire class. Well, like all her tips were amazing, but that one was like mind blowing because I was like, oh, I've been, you know, you do these perfect lines, like this perfect H, and then you do the line across and you ruin it. This is somewhat the same for buttercream, but because buttercream is structural where if I did that H, it would just go over it versus in royal, it would blend all together. I don't do the same thing for the buttercream. You know what I mean? Because the buttercream will hold together and it will stay on top of each other. The Royal, they like, it's like two lovers. They just get all hooked up together in your cooking. It's like crazy. All right. So it's like, if she wouldn't even come and do both sides of the A. So sometimes you can, look, she would go like this. And I have to tell you, part of me was like, God, girl, that is such genius. But that's also why she says she takes very small orders, like very small. And I definitely don't. I like the larger um, crazy orders. And so, yes, this is super cool. And see this little thingy bothered me. Um, but then I have to say to myself, okay, well, what aspects of this, this can I take with me that I can turn it into a cookie order of 500 that I can be able to pump out in eight hours of decorating, writing it like this. I could not, I would have no hand. My hand would be the claw 
and um, it would be like 20 hours of decorating. So, you know, but you have to do what works. And if you know how to do it the right way, then like I said, you know how to push your envelope. Okay, so I will do fathers. I'm not, if I was trying to guess the placement of this by myself, like that freaking awesome cookie, I would have actually done fathers first. Like if I was doing it freehand, I would do fathers first so that it placed my position. Then I would come up and do happy. And then because day is three letters, I could place it perfectly below the APPY. So I will also tell you another trick is that I buy cookie cutters all the time. And there's a, I do not often buy the stencil. Hold on, I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna show you my, my sneak trick, but don't tell anyone because I think I'm so smart. <laughs> so here's my sneak trick. So listen, they want like $4 for some of these stencils. And then they want like, you know, six bucks for the cookie. So like, you're like 11 to $15 out the door. And you're like, really, how often am I gonna use that? So here's my trick. I go and I print off what they, or here, I print off the cookie cutter, right? And I print off the stencil that they sell with it. And then I take that, that writing and I cut it and I put it in my copy cake and I just do it. And now I didn't have to buy it. I give them full credit, it's theirs, but I didn't have to sit and own the stencil that I know I'm never gonna use for airbrushing or for royal, cause I'm not a royal swiper. I just wanna write this. So I, that's what I do. Don't tell anybody. I have all of them. I have a lot of them. A lot. I've Thank you. Them. Thank you. It, come on, you know, it's, it's like really smart. And I'm not stealing because I'm just print because see, theirs has their um, imprint all over it, but I, exactly. and then I'll be also honest, sometimes I go over it in Sharpie. So it's a little bolder in the copy cake. I highly recommend it. Just saved you millions. You're All right. safe with us, Melissa. Ah! He's genius. <laughs> yeah. So I Just book this book. tip is worth the class. I'm telling you, it's the best tip ever. I know. I highly recommend it. It's, I know. It's, I know. They, she would, I know. I think, I, I think have to think people do that, but maybe people, maybe I'm, maybe it's just me. It's just between us. Just don't tell that us and whoever else sees this. That's it. We won't share. <laughs> All right. So for this one, um, I'll go and then, and then I'll go down immediately just so you can see the difference. Um, but I'll wait to do the top so that way it doesn't blend together. You can absolutely um, go like this and just go thicker. You can do it both ways. Um, if my icing is like, I'm really like rolling, like that freaking awesome cookie, I was kind of really rolling because there was like 250 of them. So I'll be honest with you, I didn't do the outline. I just did a lot of pressure and came back. But I do feel like the outline makes it cleaner. But again, you know, once you guys learn it, you guys do what works for you. But I, it really is all about the consistency of your icing. Because if the consistency of your icing is on point, 99.9% .9 of your battle is over. I find most of my battle has always been the, the, the consistency of the icing. Like you go to any cookie class, anything, first thing that they say consistency consistency but it really is and yeah and i left a long time ago the whole seconds like how many second icing is it i did walk away from that because i found that when i was doing it it was like oh this icing you know this icing should be eight seconds and this icing for this type of work should be 20 seconds and I just found that, you know what, if I can just shake the crap out of my cookie and my cookie can, will then go back together, the consistency works for, is, is at the right point for me. So.
So line going up is thin, line going down is, is thicker. I don't even remember where it is, so I just kind of made it up. Because I don't think I, either I can't see it or uh, I didn't airbrush it right. But that's the other thing. Remember, you're the only one that's gonna see everything about your about your your writing. You know, so if it's not exactly the way your stencil is or the way the font was written out to be, it doesn't make a difference because they don't know what it's supposed to be. So see, I'll go on this side and then I will go on this side. But I won't cross over so that I don't ruin the integrity of the um, F. And this really was it. It's the same thing for the T. It's like mind blowing. To, well, it is to me mind blowing because for to me, I was always like, oh man, that is so darn smart because you look at their cookies and stuff and you're like, man, how is it they never mess up and they never have like a fat letter in the, in the middle. Oh, okay, we'll go over here. See? All right, we'll finish day and then let's go over and we'll do, we'll do a couple on the projector and then I'll come back and I'll do the other ones over here. Just so then, I don't know, I know for me, the more I can watch and the more I can see, the more that it works best for me. So, I'm going to pretend you're like me. But you see, I'm lifting. I'm not pushing my bag into the cookie. It's lifted. Ta-da! Okay. Let's take a journey. And now you have to be only on this one now. Yeah. Okay. Let's come. We'll come together and we'll, we'll go this way over here okay all right so here is the coffee cake and then here is the pico all right so i use the archon now and this is let's see this is the brand this is the brand of the pico that i bought I just got it, so I can't necessarily. I think it's awesome because I'm like, wow. All right, so to do this, here's the deal. Look at, look at all these viewpoints you're having in the kitchen. All right, so let me get paper. Melissa? So, yes? Where did you get it? In Amazon or somewhere else? Coffee cake comes from... Um, no, no, I'm talking about the new Pico. The new Pico? I got it on Amazon. Amazon? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got I think there's a link um, in the academy. I'll um, find it and I'll post it to the writing class. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so I also, all these fonts that I am doing right here, these are, these ones that go into the Pico and the thing are um, from Defont. This one's my time favorite, Watermelon. And then um, this is avocado creamy. I mean, how cute is that? I thought that was super cute. Okay, so for anyone who doesn't have a coffee cake, cap, whatever, you open it up, you have a light bulb inside, and here's where you put your little paper that Melissa just kind of just spoke. But that's fine, you have these little arms that reach in. Okay, and so I'll tell you the one disadvantage I've always had about this is it really does need to be dark so that you can see. And that was my biggest complaint was that I was like, man, if it's not dark, I can't really tell what's going on. So I'm going to, um, and it is, I wouldn't say it's loud, but I have to flip the lights out. Hold on a second, let me flip the lights so you can see. But as you can see, no, you can't see. Oh, okay, you can still see from there. All right, so you see, oh, you can see now. All right, so you see how things have to be, but the thing I like about this is that it, it's kind of just real basic. Like it's, all you need is an outlet and a light bulb, essentially. It's not high tech, 
it's all I knew. I had no idea about a Pico at all. And I finally just did it. And I've kind of gone on this for the longest time. So the other cumbersome thing is, is you see this, like you have to be on top of it. So I usually have parchment. No one's eating these cookies, so I didn't put it down. But I usually have parchment laying on here. But it definitely, like my boobs have to wrap. Like it's a, it's, it's a thing. I'll be honest. It's definitely a thing. Um, and it's bulky. Like this does not collapse down. So, but she has been a good friend of mine. Like she has gotten me through many a times. I never named her, but all right. So here is congratulations. And we'll do it on here. Also, my chair keeps rolling away. <laughs> okay. Oh, all my other lights went out. All right. So the other thing you have to watch is, is that if your hand goes over it, you've erased your thing. So it is a complete learning curve, I'll be honest, but, um, you know, what are you gonna do? What's oh. the cost of the copy cake? Yeah, the copy cake is one seventy nine. I think it's one seventy nine or two seventy nine. It's one of the two. It's always sold. Honestly, don't even laugh. It's like an art thing. So it, I got it, and everyone always gets it at Jerry's Art Arama. Please do not even ask me why I still remember that. But if you ever, if you Google, if you Google it, it will literally come up first. Jerry's Art Arama. It's super funny. But I mean, as you see, and it works. Like I do logos on it. I don't just do writing, but if I have any logos that need to be done and you know, you want them uniform. That's the main thing is, is that a lot of times when you're writing, it doesn't need to be uniform. Um, but when you're not, it, it definitely helps. See, see. But as you can see, like, I'm like, it's a little foggy. I'm going to be honest with you. When I turned on my Pico, I was like, like the heavens open. And I went, oh, I cannot believe how clear it is. It's like having the TV. So as you can see how fuzzy it is for you, that's exactly how fuzzy it is for me. Um, if you're looking to invest in one, I wouldn't recommend going this route only because you got to have yourself a lot of storage for it. And they just make some, they just make newer and better products today. And you don't have to print it out. You can go straight from your phone or your iPad or any device you have. It works for Android and that, and it's pocket size. I mean, it's literally the size of my cell phone. So but it definitely doesn't take this long to write. I will say I do go, I do go significantly faster, but that's probably why sometimes it's like messed up. Patience has never been like a big one for me. <laughs> and Melissa, if anybody is thinking about buying a Pico, Pico Pico, I say Pico, um, it, I'm more than willing, more than happy to jump on a Zoom or walk them through setting it up and, um, you know, getting the, the fonts from DeFont to the Pico, anything that they need. Okay. So, turn off our old Betty. She's, she's a good one. We got to love her. All right, so now we'll go over to this little nice nifty new thing, which I have to tell you, I was very happy about. Um, okay, just bring this over, which I've been charging it. Okay, so, and I will say like this little thingy, this thing is super cool. This is what I usually record all of my lives on and stuff, but look, it has like a nifty spot for your iPad and things like that. So it's super cool. Um, all right, don't laugh at me when I tell you like, I'm like, this one also has a remote. But I'll be honest with you, my, my son's like, you really wanna use this right now? And I'm like, 
Yeah. We have to, like, I want you to see all of it. And so I want you to see how everything um, hooks together. I haven't played with it enough due to the fact that I haven't had any orders really that have required, um, you know, doing, doing stuff, but I'm determined. So if I could do get it turned on, it's turning on. Does anybody have any questions while we're waiting for my little girl? I don't even know where to look. For waiting for her to turn on. Oh, it's I think it's on. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Um, yes. Melissa, let me ask you something. Yes. Due to how you know, all the time, time consuming the writing might be, you know. Do, should we charge more to have that on the cookies or it should be like uh, the regular price of a cookie? So here's what I do for my pricing. My pricing goes like this. It is, first of all, oh, my pricing goes, I start at $3.75 a cookie. Mm -hmm. That's my pricing. So my pricing goes $3.75 is where I, my start point. And then I kind of like look at the cookie and decide how much work it'll be based on what I'll do. I will say these days, I don't usually charge less. Most of my cookies are between four fifty and $5 a cookie. Um, but if I'm gonna hand write something like a lot and there's a lot of deck, if that's the only decoration, I probably, the cookie, like a, the cookie would be closer to like $4. But if I was gonna do other decoration and writing, it all kind of just it depends on what your skill level is, how, how much time it's going to take you, you know, do they want it to then, do they want you to write on it? And then you come back and you have to gold, covered in gold. That's just another step. So it's like, how many times do I have to touch each cookie? So I have to touch it to flood it, to outline it, to flood it, and then I have to come back and write it. And then do I have to come back and gold it or do I come back and do any more details? So if I'm touching a cookie four, five, six, seven times, like the price is going to keep going up. And that's another thing is that it is the one thing I don't discount on quantity. And because at the end of the day, if you want to order 10 or if you want to order 10,000, I still have to touch your cookie the same amount of times as that seventh cookie I made. So it's just more work. It's not like if yeah. I'm going to make a batch of chocolate chip cookies, I'm going to just, you know, 10 times my batch and bam. Yeah. So it's the one thing I don't discount. And it's the one thing I usually don't, um, they are, they're super time consuming. I mean, it, it, when I first started, it would take me hours to just do a dozen. It could take me a day to do a dozen. So you, you know, that has to be a factor too. So like, you know, you don't want to sit here and say, Oh, I'm doing 12 cookies. And I'm working eight hours on these 12 cookies and I made, and I'm selling them for $25. Now you basically should have just been babysitting the local neighbor kid because you would have made more money. <laughs> but yeah. I will say in the beginning, that's what happened. I like my husband would laugh at me. I'd be like, I make peanuts, but I'll be honest with you. I love it. And I would do it for free because I absolutely adore it. And I think once you find something you completely love, it changes the factor of everything. So a lot of times I've taken orders that I needed to charge less for because just of their, what they wanted to pay. But I loved the order so much and I knew it would help me in my skill level, I did it. And I kind of looked at it as this is great practice, this is great advertisement, this is great building my brand and getting you to the level that you need to get to next. So it's kind of like along the way, you'll just like rethink. Also, when I went for pricing, I did go look at all of my competitors. Like it was really, cause when I started, I was just cake. So I looked at everyone in town that sold cake and cupcakes and, and found out what everybody's pricing was, what everyone's menus were. And I priced myself just below everyone. And then as time has gone on, I could be to the skill level where I can be an equal player and above some. So it's just, it all depends on where you go from there. All right, are you ready? Go to this one. Look how much clearer it is and all of our lights are on. It's really clear for me, but I guess for you, not as much. Can you see? 
No. All right. It is super clear. I'm going to turn the light off just so you can see. But when I tell you that if I was doing this order by myself, I wouldn't need to turn the lights off. Um, Christy can attest to it because she has one herself. It is, I'm now yep, learning this. Absolutely. This is not an easy, this is not a good one for me to show you because it looks like you guys can't see anything. It looked like you were almost close enough for us to see it. Try again. Is it better if I go closer? It, it, it was. Try go up maybe on top of it more. We could almost see it. Yeah. It looks Aww. like we're getting ready to I see it. I'll go back to the other ones. I just was hoping that you could see, but when I tell you, well, you can see how bright it is. It is uh, when I tell you, it, maybe if I angle it, you can just, no. Oh, put your hand, put your hand under it. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you see how you can see it? I promise it's really the way to go. There you go. Maybe because it's just white. All right, we won't do this one just so that you can, you know, I don't want you to be in the dark. But we'll do the other stencil one. Because we can't forget our buttercream front. But at least I got it working, people. Come on, that's impressive. Did Elizabeth have a question? I don't know. Elizabeth, do you have a question? Um, I do have a random one about royal icing. Huh? If you have extra royal icing, can you freeze it? Uh, um, if you're making royal with um, meringue powder, you just need an airtight container. Okay. So, like, I have a bag of royal icing that um, I just seal up. Here, I'll show it to you right here. So, this is my leftover for my nurse cookies. I went through and I leave them in here because it really is so much better, but I, I put a little scotch tape at the tip. Okay. If I'm gonna change the color or if it's been a little too long, I will squirt it all out. But if it's only been like a couple days, I'll just re-massage it to get it back together. But if, it's, if I know I'm gonna change the color, then I'll squirt it back out. But if I have a like, let's say I'm not doing anything and I have a lot of randoms, like if I have like all of these and this, well, this will just all now become black. And so I definitely recommend, don't ever throw your mush mush away, just turn it all to black, um, but you don't need to freeze it. It's not gonna, it's cause all it is is meringue powder, powder sugar and water. So as long as you're not putting dairy in it, um, it has really okay. essentially almost no expression. That's great tea. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. So mm -hmm. I'll do another one and then we're going to go over, I'll do this last one and then we're going to go to buttercream. Yeah. So you can see buttercream. That was another great tea. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Black is always hard. People have a hard time with black. Um, you have to get a feel for it, you know, and I feel that way with all the colors. So I predominantly use AmeriColor. It's my favorite. But once you start really getting into it and mixing your colors, you'll start to say, oh, like, this is where it's going to land. Like, you'll know, oh, I'm good. I'm done. By the time I color my colors, bag it, the, the colors will still develop on your cookie. So just because you put them on your cookie, it's not that they stop developing. They'll still develop until they dry. Yeah. So I can, That's so true. when you see a black, the biggest problem is, is people add so much, they break down the structure of their buttercream or their royal icing, and then they, and then they break it. So you just have to go a little at a time, but, but for black buttercream, I will usually make, usually, if no one minds, I make it chocolate first, and it's so much easier to take Swiss meringue from chocolate to black then straight, but you can do it if you just go really slow, you can take it straight to solid black. Okay, so we'll decorate this, but I will a little tip right here of the little scotch tape at the end. I learned that one from someone, mind blowing. I'm just gonna tell you right now, how smart is that? Especially if you just wanna go away for the day or you don't wanna, decorate until tomorrow, and then you pop off your tape, you re-massage, pop off your tape, good to go. Good to go. Okay. 
Melissa, Karen had a couple questions. Do you want to read yeah. them or do you want me to read it to you? Oh, so the Pico, the one that I bought was, I believe, 229 I got the one that could be wireless, but between you and me, I haven't figured out the wireless part yet. Um, can you use a cookie stencil on a Pico or do you need a cake? Oh, the cake. Oh, the cake. No, you can, you can, um, you can't use a stencil that's clear through like through the copy cake like you would need to do like a, a photocopy so any photocopy you can print the only difference with the copy cake is is that when i go to print something i do have to resize it because you know it's that that's the beauty of the pico is that your phone can edit the sizing and all of that whereas i'm constantly like printing I cut it, oh, it's still too big. I have to resize it, I have to print it, cut it. Yes, it works great because my printer's right here, but it is, well, listen, I've used it for 10 years. I, I've gotten used to it, but this, it's definitely, as you saw, I, I could see nothing until I turned all the lights out. Like, even I could see nothing. And it's just not super clear. And when I tell you, like, like look, how, look how tall it is. Like, it is, and I will stand next to it so that you can, oh, maybe, I, okay. So I will stand next to it so you can see, and then I will put it on the floor, and I will tell you it's it's not light, but you will see, and I'm 5'1". So you will see this is very tall, <laughs> and it is very cumbersome, but like very tall and cumbersome, I will say. <laughs> okay, all righty. So let me put you down so you can see this. Okay, so I'll do this one and then, so for the buttercream, I'm gonna be honest with you, <laughs> I forgot I was doing buttercream, so I didn't like bake off a cake for you, even though I love you. I would have, but I didn't. <laughs> so we'll just do have to do buttercream on parchment, but I think it's totally fine. You'll get the hint, it's all good. All right, so I think this one I'll go across first. But that I do love this writing, um, which is like this bulky, bulky, and then it's like the thin at the bottom, which I think is a cute, fun. There's so many different fonts, and when you go look onto font, you're gonna be like, oh my god, I'm in font heaven. I'm a huge font person, so a font always will get me. Like every time, like when I went to do my logo, I basically got it because the font of the M. When he does, when the guy designed it, I was like, sold. The M sold me. So, all right. Melissa, I see you using the, um, oh crap, I can't think of the name. A scribe. A scribe. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when I'm writing or doing dots, my royal icing will, will have like a point to it mm -hmm. and that annoys me. Is it just because I've gotten it too thick? Cause I'm no, because it's because you like pulled up. Whereas as you see, I'm fixing mine because I'll do it too. I'll pull up and it'll make a dot. So it's because you were still technically squeezing your bag and pulling at the same time versus leaving your bag down, stopping it, the icing and then pulling away. So that's why I have a scribe here because I do it all the time. I'm completely at fault for it, um, which was one of the things that when we did that writing assignment with those lines was to try to get yourself to not do. But old habits are pretty hard to break so thank goodness for a scribe <laughs> because I do recommend them but um yeah so I know it is it does drive me nuts though when I get the points but as you can see all right
See how I went over? I was not supposed to, but shh, I forgot. See, I'm bad too. It happens. And then I like it thicker here. So again, it's your cookie. It's your design. No one knows if that was supposed to be thinner or thicker, but I personally always like it thicker right there because I think it's prettier. But as you can see, like you can get, you can get completely wrapped up in this to the point where you're like, oh my gosh, I just did one letter. Ta-da! And I definitely, I mean, I don't know if you have a, I don't know how many people do cookies or if, if you're here for cookies or you're here for thing, but I do love the cookie swivel, I will say. I think it definitely makes like life completely fantastic. All right, let me go and give like a good amount of friendship over to our friend, the buttercream, because I feel like I don't want it to be um, the forgotten icing, even though I know, I, I personally think the buttercream is, is definitely easier. Um, uh, I still do tipless with it. You can do a tip. So if you're gonna do a tip with the Royal or with the buttercream um, and you're gonna write, it would usually Royal, it would be like a one or a two. I mean, the same thing with the buttercream. If you're gonna, it, it really just depends on the area you're trying to fill. Like if you're trying to fill a huge area, you're not gonna wanna cut the hole to like a one or a two. You're gonna wanna have like the hole to like, something like a four, a three, four, something like that. All right, so. So this is just Swiss meringue buttercream. I mean, that's it. It's nothing fancy, a, a, like a mint green. Don't ask me why it's mint green. It just, it just became that way. <laughs> but, all right. So, um, so the, the difference is here, I always find with the buttercream is that um, you can always get more air. I always found I got more air pockets with a buttercream than with um, a royal icing. I don't know why that is. I just think that, I don't know. I really don't know. So again, I smush it down. It's the same thing. Let me get my scissors. Okay. So if anyone has anything to, any issues writing in buttercream, or do you find writing in buttercream is easier for you or harder than Royal? It's harder for me, I think, because um, it's like a bigger area. So I just feel more intimidated. It's just a feeling. No, I can see that because you really are writing the letters are significantly larger. Um, and you don't usually have like a stencil. I mean, you can totally do that Pico over a cake. I have never, um, if I'm gonna write, I've never done that for cake. I do not know why. Um, a cookie, I feel like, I think that's it. I think a cookie is a defined area and a cake is so much larger that you usually, you have the room and it doesn't really matter what happens. Okay. So tell me if this icing is not too thin. Okay. So it's the same thing. When you go to write your lines with this, like you want to attach down and you, you know, you want to keep your circles. So it's the same, it's the same thing when you do your writing. You wanna practice, again, your Swiss meringue buttercream should be able to do your blizzard test. You should be able to turn it upside down. It's not going anywhere. You don't, this really is very light buttercream. Um, you don't have to use, maybe if I have like a darker color. I own nothing dark. Um, if you don't, oh, I know, okay. Um, Do that. Then I think maybe you'll see it better. Okay. All right. So let's see. 
Uh, is that better? Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, so, so um, it's the same thing. You don't have your buttercream, no matter if it's Swiss meringue, ABC, whatever it is, your Swiss meringue should hold up just like a, essentially um, a, a Wilton shortening icing. Like it's not going anywhere. Like I could lift it up and it's not gonna fall off. If your icing is not like this, it's not tight enough. Like it needs to be whipped longer in the mixer. It's too loose. But if you whip your, here's the other thing. If you whip your Swiss meringue too fast, you will put so much air in it that when you go to smooth it around the cake, you will not, you will have air pockets and you will not have like that nice smooth, you'll fight with it. I did learn, I learned that trick. It is almost best if your beater, shockingly, is almost submerged into your icing. Like you're not, you don't want to make like this little bit of icing in this like seven quart mixer where it's barely touching it. If you ideally could have like a good ratio where most of your blade is covered in icing when it's done, it's less um, water, go, less air goes into it. Okay. So the writing is kind of just literally the same. Um, my, I do find that my handwriting for icing is pretty darn similar to my handwriting for um, real life. It's the same thing. You want to push down just to attach and then you want to be able to pull up and you want to come back down. And I'm going to be honest with you. The number one thing to do is to practice these lines. And if you practice these lines, I will promise you, your writing, this is the most awkward thing to write on, but your writing will be so, you will honestly see a difference in your writing. Okay. Um, I push down and I come. I don't know why I always make for my age, but see, because it's buttercream, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, I just feel like there's more forgiveness, even though I didn't like that pee. See, this is what happens, like you go fast, but it's a cookie sheet, right? So what does it matter? I'll be honest with you, right on a cookie sheet, you will find that that is awkward. Um, but you can, you can move it, you can play with it. It's the same thing. Um, you can do cur cursive with it and you can go over yourself and it, you know, it doesn't go anywhere. So I think that's like the best part about the buttercream is that, um, you know, you can do it whatever you want. If you see, I don't know. I think the buttercream, I think because you have like a bigger area, it's like, it's like so forgiving. You wouldn't do this on a, um, on a cookie. You know what I mean? You just wouldn't. Cause you'd be like, what? No. Hold on. <laughs> right again. So the other thing is, is that if you're doing anything like here's the, and I didn't show you this on a cookie cause I guess it was a shut up, but I want to show you when you're doing a circle on a cookie. Here, I'm going to show it to you on a cookie. I could show it to you in buttercream, but I'm going to show you. Because this, I think, is so important. When you're doing a circle and you attach, and see how high up off the cookie I'm coming, and then I'm going to let my icing fall. But I'm guiding it. I'm still pressing, but I'm not, I'm not close to the cookie whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then that's how you get that perfect, like if you were doing a circle or whatever, and you get that perfect line. So yeah. it's exactly the same thing with buttercream. But with buttercream, I find um, it doesn't have the same forgiveness if you went as high. Because it has more structure than, um, than royal, so it stays. But as you can see, you can do them both exactly the same way. The key is do not put, when you're writing, when you're outlining, when you're anything, do not push your piping bag into the cookie because then you will break your circle and you don't want to break that 
beautiful circle that you have created with your icing. So when you push and you drag, that's when you get like um, this feature. So if I were to like push into my cookie and I'm dragging, my line's not gonna be straight. I'm not gonna be elevated. I'm not gonna have a circle. But if I were to just attach, oh, let's fix that. Okay, if I were just to attach and then to lift, I have, I have that perfect circle line, if you can see the difference. And it's the same thing with the buttercream. So with the buttercream, um, if I drag, that's what it looks like if I'm dragging my line. And then if I just touch to attach, well, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's hard when I'm holding it. If I were to just touch to attach, and then lift and place down. You can totally see the difference and you can see, hopefully, you can see where the difference is. And that is the trick to writing, to outlining, to any type of anything with buttercream or royal is attach, add pressure and gently, but make sure that your pressure isn't faster than your pull and your pull isn't faster than your pressure. You have to work in unison where you're squeezing and pulling at the same time and the lay gently lay out. If, if, if the arm goes faster, your line will break. If your hand faster than your, you'll get the squiggle. So it's just practicing. So do those lines, do, you know, I'll put this up so you can print it off. Go all the way across. Get page protectors. Get if you don't have a page protector because you don't, you know, no one's going out right now. Take saran wrap and put it over on your counter on top of this. Just practice your lines and then promise me that you do one page of this and then go write happy birthday and I'll guarantee you you will like it so much better than before you did this because you're just your mindset is like. Okay, perfect lines, perfect lines, perfect lines. And then you can go anywhere with it. Like it just, to the moon, to the writing moon, you go. <gasps> oh, let's see the cake. It looks so good. Um, okay, lift it one more time because she made it go big on your screen. Lift it one more time. It looks it looks great. Thank you. It's amazing. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that worked out really well. Yeah, see? You've got this. Easy, easy. All right. This has been super fun. Does anyone have any more questions about anything? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. On When you're using the buttercream to do letters, can you do a fat and thin font with that? Just yeah. as easy? Oh, just as easily, just as easily, you just have to go slow and add the pressure. Yeah, you can, and you know who is the best to watch? Um, have you ever seen, oh my gosh, blinking out now. It's not White House Bakery, it could be. I have to look and see. It might be white flower, I don't know, but they do all of their icing, like I'm mesmerized by their writing, but all their cakes are completely in buttercream and all their writing is like magicalness. So I, when I remember it, I'll put that on the group, but I'll put everything that we kind of talked about in there so that you can, you know, you know, know what you know what you heard. But as always, I'm always here. If you have any questions, you're stumped, you're confused, you know, you have a royal or buttercream nightmare, you can always message me. Anytime, always around. But if you guys practice your writing, take pictures and put them up in the Home Bakers Academy because I would absolutely love to see it. Especially do ooh, write happy birthday before your lines and then write happy birthday after your lines. And let's see your before and after. All right. I can't wait for this challenge. <laughs> now, I, I need to ask you something. Am I going to be able to wash this again? Because since my phone again, went off. Again, again, okay. and again, and forever. Okay. And ever. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. It'll always be 
all the videos that you have classes for or if you have a membership for, you can watch them as many times as you want. And Perfect. that's like just one of those awesome features. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been so much fun. Uh, as always, I have another class next week, I think. I don't remember what it is, Next but I'm super excited. Wednesday is the number cake. Oh, the number cake. Yes. All right. So if you're in it, awesome. Hope to see you there. If you're not, go check it out. Especially, you know, we got the membership. It's awesome. You'll love it. Yes. But I had a great time. Thank you so much. I'm Thank so excited you. to see all of your writings. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you.